What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we got Tony back first of all. But second of all, Tony is showing off an actual meta deck for like the first time ever because Tony's the king of rogue. Oh, come on, I build meta decks. You you I never you never play, but you played and in this one, so at our locals we had a Thanksgiving event. If you guys are Canadian, Thanksgiving was recently. You guys are American, it's not yet. But we had a Canadian Thanksgiving event and Tony, I'm actually gonna get up to show you guys this. Tony won this four player OTS uh, playmat that can cover up his whole uh, his whole desk. It's, yeah. it's huge. I unfortunately don't have a table to eat at anymore, but it looks sick. At least I'm a at least I'm a good player. Yeah, so I mean he won the event. Uh, what did you how many rounds was there? It was only four rounds. So four rounds you won XO. Yeah. And you won the event and you won this beautiful, beautiful playmat. I kind of went XO. I'll get into that when I explain the, the, like the you, what you ended did up happening. Beat, you did beat meta though. I did I played against two Drytron players, a Paleo player, and a Warrior Turbo player. So it was pretty good competition. Anyways, let's get into the profile. So what I brought to that tournament, outside of probably a good deck, is I bought pure Dogmatica. Yep. Not that stuff with invokes, not that stuff with Outlitch, literally just Dogmatica. Yep. All right, so let's get into this thing. Uh, you know where this is goes. We have the three Ecclesia, but we also have the one eight. Both these cards can special themselves from the hand if there's an extra deck monster on the field. Furthermore, they also have decent effects. This card, when summoned, searches for any Dogmatica card. Stratus for the deck. This card, when destroyed by ba uh, battle card effects, su search, uh, floats into another Dogmatica monster. Yep. This is here purely because sometimes you just don't open Ecclesia, but you need to open Ecclesia for a good chunk of stable plays. Yep. The nice part about these cards is though, they can't destroy a battle by extra deck monsters, which means sometimes I sat, there's games where I just sat in this in defense position and just walled up. Yeah. Because my opponent made a board and they can't have anything that actually removes them from the field. Yep. Classic Dogmatic. The add-in stuff, the add-in is really interesting because not a lot of people play it. The add-in is nice it, it because... It makes sense in this build. The add-in is nice because we're also playing a trap that can abuse it a little bit. Yeah. So we'll get into that. Yep. Uh, then we have two Dogmatica Maximus and two Fleur de Lis. Uh, yep. Fleur de Lis is like the other Dogmatica monsters and then it can special summon itself from the hand if you control... If you're an extract monster is on the field. Uh, in doing so, if you control a dogmatic monster, it then negates an effect of a monster on the field. Uh, this is good because not only negates your opponent's monsters, it can also negates your own monsters. Uh, yep. This is relevant in certain builds. Uh, the other aspect is when this card attacks or when a dogmatic monster attacks, it increases the attack of all dogmatic monsters on the field permanently by 500 attack. Yep. Pretty great. This is your offense of this deck. This is how I mostly won games. Because once you summon this and then have Dogmatica monsters, you just convert into an OTK. Yep. Uh, Maximus, on the other hand, is there for dumping the extra deck. It can special summon itself from your hand by banishing a, a Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Link monster from your graveyard. Yep. And then, once per turn, forces both players to send two monsters from the extra deck to the graveyard. This is a way for me to dump things like Titanclad or like... Um, like card deck Entis to out my opponent's field. But in most cases, actually, I didn't even use that effect. Because against certain matchups, let's say Drytron, really didn't want to give them a ritual monster if they sent yeah, their own they want to give them free heralds. Yeah. So what I did is I just sat this on 3,000 defense. As it turns out, 3,000 defense is kind of hard to out when your main play is sometimes make a uh, make Herald of Arclight and then, or Herald of uh, Perfection yeah, yeah, yeah. or Herald of Ultimates. Because unfortunately, not enough attack to get over this thing. Big boys. Big boys, uh, and realistically, that's one of the other targets that you float in Aiden. If sometimes this card is a bit of a brick because you do need to banish a card from your uh, yeah. graveyard that you may not have, which is why a lot of times, uh, if I know my opponent's trying to kill me, I've actually gone from Aiden into Maximus just as a way to guard my opponent with that big butt. Yep. Then we have hand traps, just hand traps. If, we have if anyone remembers, actually, you can show the hand traps off here real quick. Uh, and you can explain them in a second, but I just wanted to say, if anyone remembers when Invoked first came out and everyone just played Hand Trapped Invoked, this is kind of like a similar situation where you're just playing a ton of Hand Traps, you're playing the core, and then you're playing a bunch of defensive cards, yeah. right? So we're playing these four Hand Traps. Why? Because all these four Hand Traps are one relevant to the meta, but they also screw our deck over. As you may notice, the Thanksgiving tournament was the first tournament where Cross Out Designator was legal. Yep. And that is extremely relevant because now we actually have a way, using these Hand Traps, to convert in a way to protect our cards. If we Nadir Servant and our opponent draws us, that's bad. If we go Nadir Servant and they go Ash or Bell, that's also pretty bad. If we normal some occasion they go Valor, also equally bad. So we play all these hand traps because it answers the meta and because of Cross Out Designator. Uh, this came in clutch. I didn't expect to see this much Drytron, but this card actually did like slow the game down to a snail's pace for me to set up my board. That's but cool. all these hand traps also conveniently out that deck as well. Yep. That was a good day for you, I guess. It was a very good day. It was also part, I think part of the reason I even won is because some games I just opened three hand traps and said, well, I guess I can't lose in time. That's the thing. Three hand traps, Ecclesia, you're just winning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we have the three Nadir Servant. Uh, Nadir Servant sends a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, then lets you add a Dogmatica monster with equal or less attack from your hand, uh, deck or graveyard. 
Uh, great recursion. Once again, I will preface this by saying, one, this can add from the graveyard. In a grind game where this deck needs to grind as hard as it can, you do not want to search from your deck because it means that you have less copies to draw into for plays. Yep. And does, in most cases, you're going to activate this card out from your graveyard if it's already in the graveyard so that you can have continuous plays both from your deck and on the field. Yep. Uh, but this card is pretty simple. You send a monster from your extra deck graveyard. It's either going to be a Titan Clad or an Entis for removal or search. And then you just search for your Ecclesia or your Floor Release and then go from your plays from there. Yep. Uh, and because of the fact that we play so much consistency in our three pot of duality and two pot of aver uh three pot of prosperity and two pot of duality you, you have a few ways to get into this uh pot of duality may seem a little weird especially since the deck does special summon but you'll quickly realize that in most cases you'll want to special summon this on your opponent's turn and there's not enough of these where you're not going to be just be normal summoning them yeah uh, on the off chance i need to go for an otk that's bad but that rarely ever comes up but in most situations i'm playing on my opponent's turn where duality no longer affects me yep. but this lets me get into cards uh, that I need to see, particularly into my traps or into my Nadir Servant to really start my plays going. Yep. Uh, this card is actually... So the what, what I do love about this card, however, which is an upgrade over Extravagance, and I didn't explain this a lot, is that your X deck is kind of tight. You yeah. have a lot of things you want to send, but you also don't want to play multiples of them because sometimes you only need one of them. Yep. Which means that when you play Extravagance, playing multiples screws you over a little bit. Yeah, it's not that great. This is a little better because it does actually let you banish specific cards. Yep. Uh, from there, we then have the three cross off designated for our hand gesture. I could play playing Call by the Grave. Uh, it really didn't come up enough. Okay. Uh, this card by far is so much better just because it also lets you out things like Imperm 2. Yeah. Then, from there, we have the three Dogmatic Punishment. Okay. I would argue that, if anything, this is the reason that I think I carried me through most games. This is, uh, people sleep on how good this trap card is. This is one of the best traps in the game, in my opinion. All right. So, for those who have slept on this card, uh, this card lets you target one monster your opponent controls. Send one monster from your X deck with attack greater than this card, greater or equal to that card, yep. and then destroy it. Uh, because most monsters in this game are kind of weedy, it means you can also send something like an Entis to pop another card. You can send a Titan Clad because that means on the end phase you have a continuous play. You can send something like a Wind Pegasus Attic Nister so that when you're when you predict you're gonna get your opponent's gonna get aggressive, you can fight back. You can send an Omega for just shuffling back cards. You can send a Fair G, which is another option that you can send with the Deer Servant to search in Kleja. You yep. can send a Fair G to cycle a card if you need a hand trap. Or worse comes to worse, when your opponent summons something that isn't an Axis code with 53, you can send a five-headed dragon to kill almost anything. And this card is so versatile in how it outs your opponent. Yeah. Against the Drytron matchup, I waited until my opponent committed all the two Drytron monsters with not much in hand and pop both of them so that they couldn't summon another monster. Yeah. Against matchups like the against slower matchups than when I play Paleo, this let me send Titan Clad guaranteed I was always net advantage on my opponent. Against the Warrior matchup, this card was insane. Yeah. Because it then started shuffling back all the monsters they wanted in the graveyard. So this card is, I think, this card just as a removal is fantastic. Yep. Uh, then we have the three Imperm in here because one, Effect Negation, Hand Trap, also Cross Out. Yep. We then have two Torrential. Uh, sometimes your opponent just kind of goes a little crazy and you just need to turn off your opponent's board. Yep. Uh, this is also benefits if you're playing Aiden because then you can nuke your own Aiden and then summon out Ecclesia. Yep. Uh, does not come as much as you think. Personally though, having played that tournament, I would not have played this card. Because sometimes you've already committed to board and this card is actually just more detrimental to you okay. because you just don't have enough monsters to like rebuild your board the same way other decks can. But you would replace it, if you were to replace it, you'd replace it for more traps, right? I'm yes. Assuming? So that, yes and no. So on my channel, I also did a Doc Matica profile, but okay. it is a different one from the one I played at this tournament. I would argue that that one actually would have done much better in that tournament because of the way the, the, it interacted with your opponent. Okay. Uh, that version plays ritual cards like Dogmatic White Knight and Dogmatic Calamity, as well as the Diviner Package with some really cool plays. I just should check it out. But that one, I think, actually probably had a would have made my life a hell of a lot easier in that tournament because against the matchups I was playing against, those effects were so much more relevant than the Torrential was. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But what was so relevant was two trap trick, let you get into all your traps, like your uh, punishment and your imperm. And we all know how powerful those cards are. Yep. And then we have two rivalry the warlord. This card comes up sometimes. Uh, against a Drytron matchup, this is preferred over Gozen match because at least in the Drytron matchup, it forces them to either go the Zeus play or the uh, perfection play, but not both. Yeah. And in a lot of situations, if your opponent's playing some really weird builds, uh, it, it, it catches your opponent. My opponent in one of my Drytron matchups made Chaos Ruler because he wanted to mill Drytrons. Oh, and then when he activated the effect of summon a Drytron, I chained this, he lost the card out of it, and then I killed him from there because all he had was a Chaos Ruler. Yeah. That's, that's okay, yeah. That's me. But this card realistically can be goes in match because in every other matchup, goes in match probably does better. It probably goes in the side deck. Yeah. Uh, then going into the X deck. Yeah, then going to the X deck. We have uh, three Titan Clad. 
because of the fact you're not playing invokes, you actually have a fair space for all this. You have three Titanclad, because in the course of a game, you will send all three or banish one of them and send the other two mm -hmm. for the effects of Maximus, Punishment, and Dear Servant. And this card essentially allows you to then grab uh, a Dogmatic Monster on your end phase. And you either special summon it or you actually add it to hand. The fact that this card special summons is super key because it means that if you're under droll, you don't you can still resolve this effect. Oh yeah, true. There was a game where I did draw my opponent and I just dropped a drop floor at least, and that's how I won that game. Because this effect conveniently just doesn't lock you into only searching. Uh, it also means like if you send this on your turn, you search a floor lead for negation. Uh, if you send this on your opponent's turn, uh you send you summon a Ecclesia for field advantage to then search floor at least for an OTK. Yep. Uh we have two. And his for removal. Uh, this is a card you'll be sending off a of punishment the most for that really huge destruction. But you can also send it off as like a Maximus or a Deer Servant if you're going into a board with it. Yep. We have the one win Pegasus Agnister. Uh, if your opponent destroys a monster you control or a card you control, you can uh, banish this card to spin back one of your opponent's cards. Yep. This is just a non uh, non destruction removal. Yep. We have the one Omega. It's this is you use it for two purposes. You can screw your opponent's graveyard up. This comes relevant sometimes, but mostly it's to shuffle back some of your own extra deck monsters because if the game goes long enough, you're actually out of antithesis. Okay. Uh, then from there we have the one uh, Fair Jeet. The Fair Jeet is cool because it's sixteen hundred, which means if you activate the Deer Servant, you can search an Ecclesia by sending Fair Jeet and then Fair Jeet cycles. Yep. This is really key because sometimes if your hand is clogged up by too many Dogmaticas, it's equally bad. And this card at least lets you see something before you then search with uh, Ecclesia to then really make a, a solid play. I guess it helps if you draw like double duality or double prosperity. It's like, yeah. okay, let me get that out of my hand. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. So if I, if I, weirdly enough, if I have prosperity, this is the witch's your oh, I just won't send this. But if I don't have the prosperity and I draw in prosperity with this, I just put it back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have the one five, just five K attack. Yep. We have to out it. Uh, then we have a one Amaraj and one secure Garna. This pretty much only comes up if my if I normal Aiden and then link it away. Yeah. Uh, but it does put an extra deck monster in the graveyard. Realistically, this should have been just Artemis, but it does. Uh, this could have been at this point any other monster it probably could have been Entis and it would have been fine. Yep. Uh, then finally, we have a package listing of one Christian Hog Vibrax, one uh, Celine, the Endymion Link 3, and one Axis Code Talker. Uh, you do play a fair number of spells. You also, conveniently enough, play a fair number of tuners in your hand traps. Yep. If the game goes where you Titan Clad your opponent, on, if you summon a Titan Clad, uh, have a Titan Clad effect, or you somehow have managed to keep a Dogmatic Monster, you can just go normal summon a hand trap, turn this into a Hog Vibrax, summon a Veiler, turn this into an Endymion. Uh, and Dimion gains one counter at minimum for any spell in your graveyard, summons this back, then goes and axes code and kills your opponent. Yeah. And that's yeah. just, sometimes you just need the, uh, the, just the aggressive damage if you know you're on a clock of your opponent's advantage over yours. Yep. So this and, one was actually a 15 card extra deck. No, huh? this is a 14 card extra deck. There oh, is a 15 14. card. I what? will not tell you what it is, but it probably didn't matter enough for me to say it anyway. All right, well, thank you, Tony. Congratulations on this win. Yep. Uh, Beautiful play match. I, I guess I will talk about a bit of my matchups. Uh, game one, I played against Paleo, as I mentioned. Uh, that matchup came down to the fact that I had a bigger monster in Florida Lease that yep. he couldn't out uh, over his uh, over making a frog. And the longer I kept the beater on the field, the longer he couldn't really do anything. Uh, playing against the... Dark Warrior? The second, uh, the dry, other Drytron player. Oh. That matchup came down to the fact that... Uh, I kept them, pretty much the hand traps kind of kept me there. I kept them off the Herald, or I kept them off of one of the lines of plays. Drytron is strong because it either can go Zeus or it can also go Perfection. Yeah. Yeah. If you prevent them from going to one of those, you only have to worry about one of those. Yeah. And because things like Punishment and uh, Floor Release are in your hand, it means that in a lot of situations, there is a lot of ways for you to interact with your opponent where a Divine uh, Herald of Perfection can't negate all of it. Yeah. Because of the fact they only have one Eva, it means they don't have a lot of fairies that they can they, always they, want to They can't add two twice. So being able to go punishment, target the thing. If you negate it, I'll flirt it. Like that's, they can't negate everything essentially. Yeah. And that's how I won that uh pretty much both games in that one. Playing against a Dark War player, I actually tied. Oh. Game one, I lost the Gear Freed because Gear Freed uh oh, just see. starts sucking your monsters up and you have nothing to do that can't out it. Uh game two, I OTK'd him with enough uh Dogmatic Monsters. Game three, he went first. We went into time, and he tried to burn me with Aqua Dolphin, and I had four hand traps. And all of them were burnt out before he got to the so point. He, he, so wait. So then... All of them were effect negations. I had an Imperm and oh two Veiler. Okay. Or an Ash and a Veiler. So it was and a tie. It was a tie. But because of the fact that I had won all my games before, I ended up with seven points, and that let me have enough to play against the one guy who was XO with nine points. Oh, so you finished XO1. XO1, yeah. 
But, I mean, still, first place. Yeah. And then the Dodge Dartron player came down to one. I flipped up Ryver when he made Chaos Ruler. He lost that game. And then game three, I grinded him out to the point where all I had was I, I beat him down with a Florida Lease and kept negating things like the Binder to keep him off a Ritual Monster so he can summon his Dartrons. Yep. And I got him to the point where he uh, he made an IP and a Link Karibo, but forgot he burned out his Unicorn and had no way of using both, and oh I killed him through it. Oh, my God. All right, well, congratulations, Tony. If you guys want to check out the other Dogma the Yeah, Dogmatica. If you guys want to check out the other one, check it out. It's on his channel right now. It's much more fun. Yeah, um, yeah but if you want to win. But anyways, uh, thanks, Tony, for being here again. I appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed, like and subscribe. With that, Spanko and Tony. Sign out. Peace. Get up, get up, bring on you together.